This is the Workplace Ninja podcast coming to you live from our summit in Baden with highlights, insights, and interviews. All right, let's get started with the session here on the newcomer stage. My name is Nicholas Tinner, and the topic for today will be Intune Change Tracking, an Azure workbook which I have built for the community, so you guys. Actually, this is my very first live speaking, so I'm very welcome for feedback and also a chat for later. So also from my side, thanks very much to all the great sponsors. Without them, such great events wouldn't be possible. And it's so cool also for me as a young guy to stand here on a stage and exchange with the community. So let's get started. My name is Nicholas Tinner. I'm working as an endpoint engineer at Base Vision. I'm also from Switzerland. And some of you might know me from my blog, oceanleaf.ch, where I regularly post about enterprise mobility and security topics, mainly focused on Microsoft Intune, but of course also some security, uh, identity, automation topics. Also, if you're interested in, in some more Intune change tracking, our back um, blog posts, feel free to have a look at it. I would really uh, enjoy that. Um, you can contact me anytime, of course, here live is always the best, but um, of course also on LinkedIn and Twitter, or X, <laughs> now is it called, at Nicholas Tinner, and as said, I'm always open for a chat. So about today's agenda, first of all, I want to highlight a little bit why you would need such a thing as Intune change tracking, because that's maybe not a buzzword found on your usual Intune slides, and I think it's a very in interesting and also important topic. Then I will um, have you some Intune governance essentials for your Intune environment. And to round that up, I also want to provide a little skill snack about Intune logs. And then already we come to my solution, so the Azure workbook, also with a live demo. So I want to start this off with a story time. Actually, there's an organization which uh, most of you probably used when you came or traveled to this event, which is the airport of Zurich. And one of my work colleagues actually works for them. And once a day, they requested him to build a custom Intune dashboard. So they wanted to have a look about their Intune environment, what admins are doing, which actions, um, how is it, um, yeah, what is even going on in the environment. And um, you know, he's a smart guy. He's also present at this event. <laughs> and he first Googled if there was already such a solution at, at the, on the market, because he didn't know about my solution at that time. And then. Finally, he found my solution and uh, he made it, uh, he adjusted it uh, based on the customer's requirements. So they had exactly what they wanted and then he pre presented it to them. And of course, for transparency reasons, he also said that this was based on a community solution, but he later told me then they were uh, like really amazed that there was already such a thing they were looking for. And of course, they, it saved them uh, time and money. So everything perfect with their solution, and I think that's also the motivation for me personally to do community work, to empower other IT folks, and of course, also for this workbook. So Intune governance tips, I know governance is maybe not a topic or your favorite term, but don't you worry, we'll make it through that slide. And um, just a few essential because I come enough customer environments where these principles aren't followed, and in the end, it, it makes things more complicated. It makes the cloud a little mess and unhappy, and I don't like unhappy, unhappy clouds. So uh, we don't want to uh, make the mistakes right from begin. So first of all, you should have a general governance concept. So make clear responsibilities, who's responsible for the environment, who's, for example, responsible for app packaging, for the endpoint security node, and so on. Have your clear concept on how the environment is even built up, and also the conventions. So for example, naming convention, config conventions, put everything in settings catalog and not the legacy parts. That's important. And also follow these uh, rules, please. Then, of course, role-based access control. We all know it. In Intune, you have uh, custom roles. There's also quite an extensive blog post, which I've uh, done on these topics, um, how you can set up such a role-based access control uh, concept in your environment. Then multi-admin approval, for those who don't know, that's like a 4i principle, which means that a one admin makes a change and a second one must first approve before the action gets, uh, gets made. So that's 
a really interesting concept um, from my perspective. Although it's currently only limited to apps and scripts, I would highly desire it also to be for, uh, for example, endpoint security. So if you make a change to security baseline, a second admin must first approve. That would be quite nice. And also maybe for config profiles or devices where uh, you put on a highly impactful remote action such as wipe. Of course, documentation, I don't need to tell you this, for, but for any uh, system, any production system, you, you should have a good documentation in place. And if you don't follow these rules from right ahead, um, yeah, you need to, uh, most of the time, rebuild everything, um, because some, at some time the mesh is just going to explode and it will cause you too much conflicts and issues in your environment. So a little skill snack on Intune logs. You know that you have the Intune audit logs built into the Intune service at the tenant administration blade. These are by design, by Intune retained for one year and that's quite good. But what definitely leaves some room for improvement is the filter and search functionalities. Also, also we don't have a visualization um, really on the audit logs. And yeah, that's the point where I thought, hey, I need to develop something on my own. Of course, you have these uh, other log cut categories here from the diagnostic settings from Intune, which you can forward to your destination. Uh, these are usually Azure storage services, such as a log analytics workspace, which I used for my solution. Then on the log analytics workspace, please, this is also an advice I often give to customers, regardless of the use case you implement, but you should set up a daily cap of data. That means only a certain amount of data can be ingested into that storage solution or the log analytics workspace uh, within 24 hours. If you don't set this um, daily cap, you might end up with some, um, some data containers that just exceed their limits, limits on, and on the next day you have a bill um, that is as much as high as your salary and we don't want to have this. Also you can set here a daily, a, uh, sorry, a, a how low the data is stored in that uh, bucket. So what is now the Intune change tracking? It's basically an Azure workbook and an Azure workbook always lives on a log analytics workspace because the log analytics workspace houses the data and you make an Azure workbook powered by KQL, so the query language, which uh, groups the right information together, gives your own possibilities to make custom queries, uh, visualizations, and so on, so pretty cool. So that means Intune forwards the diagnostic settings and the logs to log analytics workspace, and there you have your Azure workbook. So about the implementation steps, first of all, prerequisites, of course, you need an Azure subscription, also the right Intune administrator role, and then you can create such a log analytics workspace resource in Azure, which is then also built pay-as-you-go, and connect, then connect the Intune diagnostics data with log analytics workspace. Um, last, then you can grab the source code of the Azure workbook on my GitHub repo and insert it just to the workbook. It's basically based on JSON, uh, pretty easy to insert. Then what's important to know that only the future data is reflected, so you won't have insights to the past data. It's really first when you set up this connection, all the data um, will then only be shown within the workbook. All right, so let's get ahead to the live demo. So I have here my uh, demo tenant, and that's basically the Intune change tracking workbook. It's uh, pretty simple, you can click on edit in here, and also here in just write the template from uh, my GitHub repo, and then you're ready to go, and your data should show up here. So then you can also, at any time, edit your query, so just go here on edit and edit again, and here you already see the queries. As a little disclaimer, I'm not a KQL pro, so if you have any improvements, um, feel free to open a change request on my GitHub repo or reach out to me. But that's basically it. You can edit and customize everything as you would like to have and build your own workbook. And I think that's really a powerful thing. Then you have a global filter or a setting, which is the time range. So which data should get reflected within the statistics you have chosen for the last 90 days. And here we see, for example, the audit event type. So which audit events, um, how many uh, happened from them in which categories. Also, you see the Intune method, the recent audit events, um, and even a little counter here at the bottom. What's also cool is that you can directly export these to Excel or um, 
or run the query directly in KQL to have more insights or to adjust the queries right ahead. Then you can here in the second plate search for specific profile types also uh, could be a, a category, so for example apps, update profiles, compliance policies and so on. And then basically you have a filter and an overview just for that discipline. Then you see some nice visualizations, so how many changes have you had over time, also which were the uh, top 10 modified profiles. Then we also see some value changes, so for example if you have modified any configuration you can here um, see the old value and new value if you insert the correlation ID from here. Then about the device identity, it's basically about the autopilot um, hashes, so the identities, if you're interested more about that topic, there's also a blog post I've once written about it. But basically what it tells you is how many hardware hashes have you uploaded, how many were modified and also deleted. That may, may be uh, helpful and insightful for some environments. Also here you see the authenticated identity, so those identities used for the upload of the hardware hash. Of course, if the OEM does that task for you, this may not be too relevant for you. Then about device operations, you can filter for the operations, so what happened in the internal environment, maybe see all wipe requests or all sync requests, also now supports for on-demand remediation, and you see everything what, uh, what is going on in your environment. Also copy here a distinct device ID and you see all events for that particular device. Then with V2, which, is, um, just, which was just released yesterday by me, uh, I added a, another blade, which is the environment overview. Uh, still working a little bit on this, on, on the sizing. But uh, what it does is basically I had a look at the Intune devices table and did or made queries for everything or for all the data which we had in there. So basically you can here filter for your operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS and so on, and these uh, queries then adjust to, the, to it. So basically you see then again an overview of your OS, ownership might be also helpful, uh, management authority, device joint type, uh, manufacturer, device model, SKU and so on. So pretty much of data going on here. All right, so that's already the workbook. Um, Try to implement it in, in your environment. If you have any way forward the, the logs to your to a log analytics workspace, it's pretty simple to set up. And um, yeah, enjoy the workbook, give me feedback, and have a nice workplace Ninja Summit 2023. Thanks.